Look around. It doesn't take long to recognize the brokenness surrounding us. Division. Hatred. Fear. Uncertainty. The pain we're witnessing is real. And the need for a savior is undeniable. It's this need which broke the heart of God and moved him to do the unimaginable. For God so loved the world, he sent his only son to change our eternity, to be the perfect sacrifice for us. Love on a cross, dying once for all, laid to rest in the darkness of a tomb. Today, as we face so many unknowns, may we remember the simple truth of Easter. The stone's been rolled away. The grave is empty. Jesus is alive. And love has risen. Powerful. Happy Easter. I'm going to do it for all those that are kind of old school. Christ is risen. There we go. Cool. I know if I didn't do that, there'd be like a riot in here or something like that. Hey, we want to welcome you so much. Uh, I'm so excited. Um, man, Easter is so huge in terms of a celebration because I know there's a lot of you uh, in the crowd. Maybe you don't come to church much and church isn't your thing. And you know, that, that's all good. Church wasn't my thing for a long time. Really, to be honest, church isn't my thing. Jesus is my thing. And so we celebrate Jesus on Easter Sunday. And this is like the Super Bowl, all right? So it's like, it's like game time. So whether you're in the space or you're online, man, I love that we get to gather together. In case you don't know me, my name is Brian Myers. I'm the senior pastor here at Grace Community Church. But even though I'm the senior pastor, the true lead pastor of Grace is Jesus. Don't forget that. And if you're trying to figure out a little bit of who we are, a little bit of our vibe here at Grace, uh, we're a church of imperfect people who are pursuing the perfect love of Jesus Christ there is not a single perfect person in this house today. And if that's you, you're in, in, you're in the wrong place, okay? Some other church, not here. We celebrate the love of Jesus this Easter. And we also celebrate the idea that Jesus Christ is about resurrection. That Jesus Christ is about actually doing the impossible in our lives. That he is our God of the impossible. If you look throughout the Gospels, what we find is that with man, things are impossible. But Jesus reminds us that with God, all things are possible. So as a church, we believe in the resurrected power of Jesus. And not only changes our tomorrow, it changes our today. And we really do believe that God is doing a new work in and through his people. And as far as the resurrection, the world needs good news these days. I mean, if you, if you like checking out cable news, if you still have cable, um, you'll see, man, just the world is full of just bad news. And people are discouraged. Uh, people are feeling that things are hopeless. And the gospel truth is that there's nothing hopeless with Jesus Christ. There's that confidence. And so what we want to do is move into believing because our world wrestles with unbelief. People are not believing that God is still in the work uh, or in the, in the process of raising people up to life. That God is bringing people from spiritual death to spiritual life. That people are not believing, not in their mind, that Jesus Christ saves they're not believing in their heart, which is where faith really comes from. And so we celebrate this Easter Sunday that Jesus Christ is about resurrected life. And so as we move into today's message, as we talk about God of the impossible, I'm praying if you're here today, I, I pray that your heart is encouraged. I want you to leave today with every sense of confidence that Jesus is everything that he says he is. And that you can leave here today with these assurances. First, that you have peace from your past. Whatever you come in this room with, I'm praying that you would find peace from your past. I'm also praying that you would find this hope for tomorrow, that our best days in Christ are always ahead. I'm also praying that you would have this confidence for today, that God is with you, that God is for you, that you are not alone, you're not abandoned, left as orphans, that he's given you his spirit to live in you to experience this resurrected life that he's called you to. And if there's any question about that, Paul reminds us in Romans 15, 
He says, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit, you may abound in hope. I want you to know that I've been praying for you this week. Uh, There's some of you who are joining us online. We're happy to have you with us. I'm loving that we can connect in this way. Or maybe you're in the student center right now because there wasn't enough room in this space. I'm glad we can connect. But my prayer was those that were online with us for many months, if not years, would actually have a personal connection and experience here. And so if you are here for the very first time after being with us online, I just want to say welcome. We're so happy to have you here. There's some of you who've been a part of the Grace family for a while, and maybe you've been away. I want you to know you are loved and you are missed, and we are better together. We've been called to community. You're not meant to go through life alone. I think we've discovered that we are not meant for isolation. It is not good when Brian's alone with his thoughts, that we are better together and we're called to relationship and growth, so we do that together as a church community. And so today, as we celebrate Easter Sunday, we celebrate that not only did Jesus Christ leave the grave, family, we are resurrected to new life in him. So let's pray. Father God, uh, I'm excited. I love that each year we get to look, Lord, not just at the cross on Friday, but Lord, the empty tomb on Sunday. God, I know at times we feel like we're in the grave. We feel like all hope is lost, but Lord, at just the right time, Lord, you show up by your grace, and Lord, we experience redemption. Today, Lord, I pray that we would understand in a very personal, intimate way by your spirit, Lord, the power that we find in Resurrection Sunday. And so, Lord, may we leave today encouraged as your people in Christ's name. Amen. At Grace Community Church, you know, like we shared earlier, there are no perfect people allowed. We also believe in God's radical grace. I mean, his grace, if you read the Gospels, is radical. He loves people that seem unlovable. And so as we reflect on that, I know some of you come here today and you have a past and you have a story. You have things in your life that honestly you're, you're not proud of. Things you've kept with most and maybe only have shared with your therapist. I get it. All of us have stories of our past, but here's the reality. I think we long for redemption. I think we long to experience freedom. And whether that was someone who hurt you or something that happened to you, or maybe you just hurt yourself because family, we're like our own worst enemy. I don't know about you. Like, I I don't need any help in my life to wreck my life. Brian is more than able to do that. And so we celebrate the idea that we actually can experience redemption, and maybe you're wrestling with this lingering belief that you will never be normal, or you will never be the same, or you will never find healing. Family, This Easter, we celebrate the fact that the resurrection gives us peace from our past. Whatever you've went through in your life, the gospel of Resurrection Sunday is that you can have peace from your past. Through the resurrection of Jesus, we see that we are no longer a prisoner to our past. Jesus holds the keys and family. He sets the captives free. Oftentimes, I think we're sitting in a prison cell that's already been opened and we have not yet walked out of it. You see, your past mistakes don't have to define you. Your past mistakes don't have to determine your future. And so as you go through this celebration today, I pray that you would believe, not just in your head, but your heart, that you really can be a new creation in Jesus Christ. Brad shared that earlier, and we find it in 2 Corinthians 5. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh, even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh. We regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Because of the resurrection, Christ exchanged the perishable with the eternal. When Jesus walked out of the grave, Jesus walked out of that body of death that was our sin that was upon him on the cross. He who knew no sin became sin so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And when Jesus left the grave, he left glorified. And we get to identify with him in that. That's why as we celebrated Holy Week, we actually go all the way from Palm Sunday. And if you missed the message last week, dude, the Holy Spirit crushed it through Ed. Listen about Palm Sunday and the rocks will cry out. We carried it all the way through, but man, there is no resurrection without a death on Friday. For those of you that were with us on Friday, what a powerful experience. And we celebrate the fact that we can identify with the death of Christ on Friday. Why? So that way on Sunday, we can also identify with him in the resurrection. Family, we get to experience this new life in Jesus Christ. 
You are no longer defined by the identity that was given to you. You may not have to identify any longer with an identity that you've given yourself. You have a new identity in Christ Jesus that you are a child of God. Family, our past experiences don't have to define us. It kind of reminds me a little bit because we walk around with baggage. It's real. We're like chained to it. We don't know how to break away from it. Reminds me of elephants in the circus. I remember as a kid where they actually had circuses, all right, when you could do it. And actually watch these elephants, you know, that were like these 12,000 pound animals. I mean, they're impressive. They're amazing. And you got this guy who's about 150 to 200 pounds that literally is taming this beast. And then you wonder what stops them from just breaking loose? Like they, they move these giant logs or, or cars or whatever, but when they're in the back area, they're literally staked by chain. They used to be to these three-foot stakes. And you're like, man, surely that elephant can break loose. Doesn't he know? But here's the problem. When that elephant was young, it was chained to that same three-foot stake. For days he pulled. For weeks he pulled. Weeks turn into months. And eventually the elephant's like, you know what? I can't. I give up. Then by the time the elephant is 12,000 pounds, it had already resolved the fact of, you know, I can't break free of this chain because I see that stake. But the reality is that that elephant has power to be set free if he believes. Family, some of you here today, you are in bondage. You are chained to a stake that you think cannot move. You think it cannot be uprooted. And the gospel and the message of Easter is that you can be free in Jesus' name. It doesn't matter what you have in your past. You can be free in Jesus' name. You may come to service today thinking, man, I just can't escape that. I'm, I'm trapped in that sin or I'm trapped in that shame. Others around you may give you that label and say that's who you are. But family, that's not who you are. God is the one who says who you are. This Sunday, God is calling you to break the chains and to be free and to leave here free in Jesus' name. Family, that is Resurrection Sunday. We don't look at the physical world that we see. We know that things are spiritual in nature. We know the enemy is constantly lying to us. We know we are lying to ourselves. But family, God is speaking truth to you, and I believe he's speaking it to you right now. And it's not me. It's God through me. He speaks it in his word. And we gather today to proclaim the truth of what is right about Jesus Christ. And family, truth transforms us from the inside out. And today, may we be changed. We no longer have to be bound to sin and shame. We can walk in new patterns and experience freedom in Christ's name, which is why we can find God who heals our hurts, our habits, and our hangups. That's what we celebrate at CR, which is Celebrate Recovery. It's the idea that we can be free We are not defined by how the world defines us, but no, it's God who defines us. We are a new creation. The old is gone, the new has come. Now, some of you are like, all right, isn't it like a one-time event? Like when I give my life to Jesus, I'm a new creation, but like now what? Now for me, I remember when I gave my life to Jesus in 93, I I was like, you know what? The gospel is is good news. I, I, I didn't respond to the gospel out of fear of hell because family, fear is a temporary tutor. It doesn't compel you to respond It's God's love that leads us to repentance. And so when I responded to that love, I gave my life to Jesus, and I thought, man, I'm now free from sin. I don't know about you, but I found that after I gave my life to Jesus, and even after I was baptized, guess what I still did? I still sinned. I still struggle. I know, I'm like just, whoa, man, the pastor sins? Mind-blowing. Yeah, yeah. The new creation is not a -a once-in-a-lifetime thing. It's something that we experience each and every day day. And it's not just once a year. It's every day. And we celebrate that we're a new creation. The old is gone. The new has come. Every morning, I have to be renewed in Christ. I'm so grateful that each day, it's a new day. I'm that new creation. Family, this is called sanctification. Each and every day, I look more and more like Jesus Christ because of the work that he's doing in my life, and he's not done with me yet. And then we look at the gospel of John, that talks about Jesus who had left the grave and actually said that inside the grave, his grave clothes or his dead digs, whatever you want to call them, they were folded up like right there. So just to be super clear, Jesus loves folding laundry. It's right there in the Gospels. I don't get it. He's Jesus. But anyways, just share that with your kids when they don't do their laundry. Like this is what Jesus does. Anyways, I digress. Man. 
And so he, he, was, he was there and, 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 he, and he folded it all up and he's there and he, and he left the grave. And it's not that like Jesus was walking around naked because that's just an awkward thought, okay? It's that Jesus was walking out of the grave in new glory. And so he was free of those dead clothes. Family, every day we wake up, we need to be a renewed creation in Jesus Christ. We need to take off that sin and that shame that just encumbers us and leave it in the grave and leave new, lead new patterns in Jesus Christ. There's people in your life that want you to go back into the grave and put those clothes on. Don't do it. You're not called to that. You're called to so much greater. You to live a new life clothed in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. His, your sin became his sin. But here's the flip side. His righteousness has now become your righteousness. You are now clothed in Jesus Christ. And so this Easter Sunday, let's celebrate that we get to live new lives. And so I see you guys. Some of you are wearing, you know, your Easter Sunday's best. Well done. I want to encourage you this Easter, wear Sunday's best, which is being clothed in Jesus Christ. The next thing we find on Easter is that the resurrection gives us hope for tomorrow. That's so important today because I think there are so many people that are experiencing discouragement. I think depression is just off the charts right now. And for those counselors that I know, they're like, yeah, things are just intense. I think people are experiencing fear of what the future holds. We do not like unknown variables. We think we like change. I'm gonna be honest, we don't like change. We don't. We say, we do. oh yeah, I wanna change it up. No, you don't. I don't know about you, but like when I go to the restaurant, the same restaurant I go to every week, I don't like ordering anything different on the menu, all right? Which is funny, you know, you're seated, they give you these things they call, you know, menus. I look at the menu. I don't know why. I look at it, and I look at all the things that I'm not gonna order. And then when they come to me, and they ask, hey, can I take your order? Which is kind of a weird question, because you know what's gonna happen. Well, sure, you can take my order. Here I go. I'm gonna order the same thing I did last week. I want a turkey avocado sandwich with spicy dressing, and I want that side salad with ranch. Well, would you like maybe our special? No, behind me, Satan. <laughs> you're, you're tempting me to change. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. No, just bring me my sandwich. Is there anything else? No, thank you. How many of you guys are like that? Creatures of habit. Yeah, seriously. Yeah, there's counseling after the service today. There really is. Yeah, we're messed up. Anyways, man, for people who like control, and I'm a control freak, the last two years, I will say this, you know, because I'm getting up there in years, I won't say how many years, but I can safely say, I'm getting close to 50, the last two years, I think, have been the hardest 50 years in this nation's history of what we've went through. It's been a lot. For those people that like to plan and like to have a plan for the plan and a plan for the plan for the plan, this has driven you nuts. Family, this has been God's work to do something new in your life. Whether it was a pandemic, riots, an election, a war. I mean, seriously, I'm just like waiting to, like, what's the next thing they're dealing with us now? Seriously. We feel very insecure because the world is unpredictable, but I am so grateful that we have the solid and faithful nature of who God is. Just this last week, Facebook like reminded me of a memory from two years ago. Normally, it's like a fond memory. This one was me literally preaching to an empty service with no people in it on Easter. I'm like, PTSD kicked in all over again, all right? Because seriously, it was literally, the, the, the caption was a pastor's worst nightmare. Seriously, it was a shot of this whole room empty and just a red light in the very back and, and me right here. How weird was that? I would have never imagined, I was literally preaching and I was thinking, because I, I know it seems weird, I'm actually thinking and having conversations with myself as I'm teaching I don't know. I'm just grateful that stuff doesn't come out as I preach. But anyways, as I was preaching, I was thinking to myself, this is like a nightmare. I can't, I can't believe this is really happening. I mean, how many at some time in the last two years, you kind of felt like, man, I, I just want to wake up from this. Anyone? Yeah, I, I know I did. And so in that, I really wrestled because I wanted things to go back to normal. And that was a, a, an expression that people were, you know, fanatic about. Hey, we need to return to normal. Family, I'm telling you, I am so grateful that God did not return us to normal. 
I'm so grateful that God is about doing a new work. And so as we reopened the plaza and we had services outside, which was beautiful. If you guys were a part of that, man, it was special. We opened it up in May of 2020. Then we opened up for services in November of 2020. And then we went through 2021. And now here we are in 2022. All I know is this, what the enemy intended for evil, God intended for good. That God is doing a good work, a new work. Never in my life have I been more grateful to gather as the church. Man, it is an utter joy and a privilege that we get to gather together in Jesus' name. I don't have to go to church. I get to, I get to be a part of the church. And guess what? We get to be the church. And that's what we celebrate at Grace. I'm grateful to God that we didn't return to normal. Normal was so February of 2020. Over the last two years, God has done something special in the life of this church. He has broadened our reach. And so some of you are here today and some of you guys are watching online. You are part of the work that God is doing. He's deepened our love for people and he's made us totally new. Family, if you have any question about the work that God's doing, look around the room right now. God is doing a beautiful work and it's in you. And this is what we find in Romans. We're not to walk in fear, family, we we'll walk in faith of what God is doing for if, for in this hope we were saved. Now, hope that is seen is not hope for who hopes for what he sees, but if we hope for what we do not see, we wait for it with patience. Likewise, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. You see, Easter is a celebration of transformation. It's about new beginnings, new stories, new tomorrows. Being that it's spring, my wife, she's a teacher, so what did she order? She ordered two canisters of caterpillars and they're literally sitting on our countertop in our kitchen. I can't tell you how disgusting it is. I mean, these things, I mean, they are, they're doubling in size every two to three days. I mean, I've actually added them to our Planet in Motion Fitness. And, um, you know, these things, they're starting to spin those threads. And I know this, probably at the end of this week, there is going to be cocoons in those containers. All right. What many people don't realize, I'm, obviously you know where this is going, all right? It's, yeah, they turn into butterflies. You saw this one coming. But anyways, what you don't realize is that inside that casing, their bodies are literally being broken down. It's not like God is taking a caterpillar and adding to it or, or tweaking things and moving parts around. No, literally it liquefies, becoming nothing and the cells then tell it to realign into a new creation? Man, what is that like? It's amazing that God actually breaks everything down and makes it brand new at the end of that time. And then as it's there in the cocoon, it, 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 it's, it's growing, it's stretching, it's reassembling. It's stressful, it's painful, but once it comes out of that cocoon, it is a new life. And family, the cool thing is, even a butterfly is proclaiming the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. You see, Easter is a reminder that in the darkness of the grave, that God is preparing us for a bright new day. As we look at the resurrection of Jesus, we don't know exactly what happened with his body in the grave, okay? Okay? But what we do know is that in the grave, Jesus Christ became something else and now glorified. Family, you may feel like you're in a grave. Don't grieve the grave. Embrace it. You may feel like, man, I am undone. I feel like goo. You're right. God's doing a new work in you and be patient with him because he is making you a new creation. And to remind you, you're not to fear this process. You're to embrace it. Throughout the scriptures, God is constantly saying, fear not, for I am with you. God is with you. You may feel like you being broken down is like God is against you. No, the reason you're being broken down is he's remaking you and he's building you from the ground up. He can't build off of a broken work. He's got to make a new work. And so what do we find? Family, he's calling you his own. He's making you his kid. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you've received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father, Daddy. I know you can't, bless you. That was the cutest sneeze I've ever heard in my whole life. <laughs> and now it's forever canonized on this episode, on Easter. That's awesome. And now I lost my train of thought. I'll get it back. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, yes, daddy. Um, I'm so grateful I don't remember my own physical birth because <laughs> that'd be traumatic, wouldn't it not? I mean, for parents, you know, uh, oftentimes they forget the experiences, which is why they have more kids. But it's traumatic. I think this rebirth in your life is a traumatic experience. Like that butterfly coming out of the cocoon, like a baby coming from the mom. I think you coming into this world can be a very traumatic experience, but know that at the end of that is something very beautiful because you get to experience the love of your dad. And as I say this today, I know some of you, when I say that, it like literally triggers things in you because you're like, I don't have a good relationship with my dad, so I don't even know what that looks like. Family, you have a father in heaven, a perfect father who loves you wholeheartedly, who is for you, wants nothing from you, and you can find wholeness in his love, which is why this Abba Father is more of a familial thing of like a dad that you can approach because you know that he loves you. And so what does that do? You see, God can relieve your fears. Those fears you have, those anxieties you have in this world, in this life, God as your father wants to relieve you of those. And here's the problem. Most of us are not being relieved of our fears. It's like we're reliving our fears each and every day. We've got these memories of of what I've done or what they've done or this event in my life that happened that I wish I could forget Or maybe I'm going through it right now, or maybe it's in front of me, and you're reliving it over and over again, and so you're trapped in fear. Family, you've been called to adoption, to sonship. The love of your father says, man, he wants to relieve you of your fears, and he's telling you, it's going to be all right. Finally, Easter is a reminder that the resurrection can give us confidence for today. You guys can walk out of here in confidence with a little skip in your step as you leave here today because you are firmly in Jesus. You see, when we feel overwhelmed by the challenges of life, whether it's grief, maybe financial struggles, trying to figure out how to make ends meet, maybe it's relationships and someone let us down and we would love someone to love, but we feel like there's no one in our lives, but no, you are never alone. Someone is always with you. The Lord loves you. That God wants you to rest in the security of his love, that just as Jesus was in the grave and he was right where the Lord wanted him, that the Father loved him and gave him all that he needed. So that way, at the end of the story, on Sunday, he walked out of the grave glorified. This new creation. Family, God's doing the same work in you, if you let him. The same power, the same presence of the Holy Spirit that was upon Jesus can be upon you. It's God's spirit in you and through you that actually allows you to be that new creation. And so just be confident in the work that God is doing in your life if you've made Jesus Christ your Lord. And if you have any question about that, just look to Philippians 1.6. This is Paul speaking. And I'm sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. For those who have given their lives to Jesus and now he indwells your heart by his spirit, that God is doing a work in your life. And the cool thing with God is this. He will finish what he started. And that may not be like you, but it's like our Father in heaven. He will finish what he started until the day of Jesus Christ's return. And so that means all of us, to some extent, we all should have signs on us that should say, like, under construction, all right? Maybe uh, it should say, pardon the mess. You hear me? Uh, maybe we feel like our life is going through a spring cleaning. Has anyone ever done a spring cleaning? That's scary right there, okay? Because with spring cleaning, it gets messy before it gets clean, right? And this spring, don't do it without Jesus. Sometimes we feel like we need to clean up the mess before we invite Jesus in. No, Jesus says, no, I, I want in this mess because I want to make you new family. Invite him in, which is why God can strengthen our soul. In this season of Easter, know that God wants to strengthen you. He wants to make you that new creation that walks with confidence, not in yourself, because you don't have it. It's in God. The strength we need most is not earned, it's not achieved, it's not micromanaged. You can't think your way into this strength. It's one that comes upon you through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. As we shared earlier today, apart from Christ, you can do nothing. The world wants you to believe that you have something in you that can help you realize your full potential. Family, I've been looking my whole life within and I don't have anything in me to help me realize my full potential. The only thing that will help me is Christ. 
The only thing that increases my capacity to be the man that God wants me to be is the Holy Spirit in my life. And so now my full confidence is not in myself, it's in Jesus. And so now we come full circle about what do we believe. And this is Jesus in the Gospel of John. He says, I am the resurrection. Anyone who believes in me, even though that person dies, will live. When you encounter Jesus in his resurrection power, change is possible because he is the God of the impossible. As we close here today, I want you to know, the reason we gather as a church, and again, church is not a place, church is a people. The reason we gather is because we are forgetful people. We also have hearts that are prone to wander. When we gather as a church family, we are reminding ourselves of who God is and what he's done. And the reality of that changes who we are and how we live our lives. And so we are reoriented that we experience brokenness when we're in isolation, but when we come together in community, family, that's where God does a redemptive work. We are better together. Now, if you don't have a church home, I'm praying that you would not just consider us friends. I pray that you would make grace your faith family. For some of you, I just want to say this, welcome home. This is where we get to be family together. If you're just checking things out and this feels like a blind date because someone drug you here, welcome. It's all good. I kept today short and sweet like a blind date. You don't want to go too long. I want to encourage you to come back next week. I'm not telling you, hey, come back for the rest of the month, or hey, come back for the rest of 2022. Can you just come back next week and experience the resurrected power as people right where I stand will be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, proclaiming that just as Jesus Christ uh, did a new work through the grave and through his life that He's doing a new work in their life, and so we're going to celebrate through baptism. As we close, I want to encourage you with Paul's prayer to the church at Ephesus, because I think oftentimes we think that our situation is unique. It's not. I love history, and I, I know this. History repeats itself. We've seen this pattern throughout of all time in history, but Paul is writing to a church that feels like they're lost in a world that's fallen and broken. They're feeling like things are, are without hope, But Paul's reminding them that there's always hope because of the work of Jesus Christ. If you'll please stand with me as I read these words to you and we close in worship. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think according to the power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. And God's church said, amen, amen. Let's sing.